Podcast 66, the podcast where once a week we watch an episode of the 1966 Batman television show and talk about it. Today we're watching Batman is Riled. My name's Kendall. I'm Scott. The last time we left our dynamic duo, they were sneezing a lot and uh, they were about to be unmasked on uh, live TV. Yeah, how do you think they're going to get out of this one? Who knows? Do you think they'll use their wits and maybe fisticuffs? That's often the case in this show. Yeah. Any predictions or should we get into it? Oh, I can't wait. Let's get into this. Cool. I guess there's nothing to predict. We've already watched the episode. That is true. Yeah. Batman and Robin are about to be unmasked. And then uh, we get a quick uh, utility belt save. Yep. These these dang blast pellets that Batman has, they're yeah. like he uses them all the time. He uses them so much, and I never remember that he has them. Like this isn't something I remember from this series. Yeah, I I remember the crazy bat rope. Yeah, I remember the bat rope, like batarangs, the bat cuffs, and then obviously everyone remembers stuff from the movies, like the bat repellent shark spray, you know, stuff like that. Yeah, it's it's shark repellent bat spray, Scott. I know I should have. As soon as I said, it, I was like, I got that all scrambled up. But so get, yeah, <laughs> yeah. He drops the pellet, and uh, they're able to free themselves before they're unmasked. But doesn't the trigger like the sprinkler system? Oh yeah. Wait, is that here? I wrote not. My first note is not water. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He triggers the sprinkler system, and then the Joker says something like, fight water with fire. Yeah. And yeah, the Joker has his own utility belt, and he kind of ties the two of them up. Yeah, they use, like, uses, like, his attack tying streamers, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Um, But that, that doesn't stop Batman for long, though. Yeah, the Joker's trying to get away through the, like, scaffolding or yeah so it's usually i'm assuming it's a catwalk out there but i wrote like they clearly did this so they didn't have to film it because the camera doesn't pan up and like batman just kind of like looks up and like kind of follows him and you hear footsteps ah yeah i didn't notice yeah i just i thought that was kind of funny uh but then batman uses his utility belt again to get his bat rope and like the most hilarious physical act i think i've ever seen it's him just kind of like climbing but essentially flying up the bat rope and it's really funny like unintentionally so 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 yeah we get a very different bat climb here and you know obviously it's just like either adam west or a stunt person like being pulled up by wires yeah it's clearly wire work but uh yeah and i gotta assume it's a stunt person but you don't see his face in universe though just like batman has to have so much upper body strength to just be like you know with no footholds just like climbing up to this catwalk with his just pure arm strength and he goes so much faster than every other time batman and robin use the bat rope when they do the camera on the side trick you know like pretty pretty wild um It's, it's, it's one of my favorite things I've ever seen. Up on the catwalk, Joker and Batman have another confrontation. Batman gets tied up in some confetti, and the Joker gets away. Oh, yeah. And I'm going to say, um, in regards to our last episode, talking about how Robin started saying holies in the first episode, I'm, I'm going to say holy ramp up, because holy smokes, he has a lot of catchphrases in this. Um, so yeah, so he gets they get tied up in the in the streamers and stuff. Robin says holy serpentine, and he's gonna say, I have a lot of catchphrases this episode. Nice. Yeah, make yeah. sure to interject whenever they come up. Yep. Speaking of uh things we said last episode, we talked about how Batman just like obeys every law. Yeah. But here we get a scene of uh, Batman and Robin driving back to the Batcave. And geez, Batman drives like a lunatic. Have you seen the Bat Turn? 
Like, yeah, it's crazy. He doesn't even use the bat turn here, yeah. but he's just like not obeying the like speed limit or like traffic lines at all. I guess the cops don't do that either when they're like driving around. Yeah, but I don't know. Seems very out of character for this Batman. I guess I can see that, yeah. But I mean, the Batmobile is really cool, and I would drive it like a lunatic too. Yeah. Oh, I like. I think we've mentioned it many times. This is this is my favorite Batmobile, like by a long margin. Oh yeah, very good, very good. So yeah, we get a very funny scene here mm-hmm. because the narrator interjects, just asking the audience, yeah. hypothetically. Have Batman and Robin met their match? Will the Joker's utility belt be their ultimate undoing? Then we cut to a newscaster. Yeah. And the newscaster asks the citizens of Gotham, hypothetically. This is is great, yeah. Have Batman and Robin met their match? Mm -hmm. Will the Joker's utility belt be their ultimate undoing? (laughs) And then... Yeah, The newscaster cuts to an interview he's doing with Commissioner Gordon and he poses those same two questions to Commissioner Gordon. Yeah. This newscaster is like my favorite character. I loved everything with him. His son, I think his name was Harold. Yeah. He tells tells audiences that his son before bed was saying his (laughs) prayers. So like bless mom, dad, and his dog. Yeah. And then he says a prayer to Batman to like end <laughs> the Joker's like, like reign of terror. Yeah. <laughs> the way he says it, it's all so melodramatic. Uh, it's so good. <laughs> and Batman's such a silly concept to hear a kid pray about it. Like, I don't know, something about yeah. it is really funny. Just like praying to Batman for salvation. Yeah. I don't hopefully this kid wasn't watching because I feel like what happens next would be like very traumatic yeah. for him. Yeah, as uh, all of a sudden the camera starts to shake because it turns out the Joker and his henchmen are taking over. He says whatever the newscaster's name was, I don't remember. Uh hey, no hard feeling put her there. And then you know, of course he shakes his hand. Of course, he's got a classic like buzzer uh thing that knocks the guy out. So I I guess I assumed it knocked him out, but also like well, until he goes stiff and like falls back, and then they take him away. Yeah, until the end of the episode, we don't really get any confirmation what happens to this man. Mm-hmm. So like for all we know, he just could have been murdered. Yeah, like on live television, and then and you know oh gosh. We've talked about it last episode and in the first two episodes of the podcast. Just the similarities between the Riddler and the Joker in this series are kind of wild because we get this game show. Yeah, the Joker plays an impromptu game show with his uh, hench people at like the the anchor desk. And like he's essentially kind of like making like a show, like a theatrical kind of presentation of what he's going to do. Yeah, and this, like, while the Joker isn't saying any riddles here, feels very Riddler in its delivery. Yeah. Yeah. And then he, is this the scene where he says something grammarly incorrect? Oh, so yeah. So he's asking his hench people who are the contestants on this game, there's an article of clothing. Oh, it's a belt. There's going to be a big switch. What kind of switch? Uh, One of the hench people answers an electric switch. And that's the wrong answer. And the Joker says, oh, every every wrong answer uh, results in a dollar being donated to uh, Joker's home for worn out bats. See, all right. This is one of the things I really like about this version of the Joker is he tells jokes. It's really funny. Yeah. Uh, but yes, so we get to the end of it and the, the Joker leaves a little riddle for Batman. Mm-hmm. He says, he who laughs last laughs good. And then Robin says, holy grammar. Yeah, because that is this. 
That is grammatically incorrect. Uh, mm -hmm. At first, Batman's kind of thrown off by this whole thing because uh, what what's the... It's he who laughs last laughs best is the phrase. Yes. So Batman is very fixated on that. But Alfred posits that maybe there's something to Robin's grammar comment because if we were to take what the Joker said and make it grammatically correct, it would be he who laughs last laughs well. Mm -hmm. uh, which leads the dynamic duo to bring up a James J. Laughwell. Yeah. Who uh, seems to have participated in some uh, colonial activities, you know, stealing artifacts from other cultures. Which leads to Holy Safari. Oh yeah, <laughs> but I, I before we move move to past the scene too too far. One of the things I wrote down is everyone besides Batman solves everything. Uh, Robin and Alfred figured out uh, the the key to the the laughs well thing. Like I figure, like and like Robin's always solving. Like it feels like always is the one verbalizing everything. Like all of the riddles, answers. Like I, I feel like everyone around Batman kind of is better at figuring that stuff out than Batman. Yeah. In show. So in the Riddler episodes, it really felt like Batman was kind of just intentionally taking a back seat and letting Robin come to the conclusions. But here it's pretty obvious that Batman is stumped. Yeah, it's just it's just something that really stuck out to me like in this scene. Yeah, it's cool that it's cool they're hanging out with Alfred and he gets involved in the super crime and stuff. Yeah, I I have a memory of Alfred getting really involved in in an episode, uh, but we'll get there. Later. Okay, I do not have that memory, so oh, I'd it's gonna to get there. It's gonna be good. I'm very excited for that episode. All right, I'm looking forward to it. But yeah, I think that's worth keeping an eye on. Like, does Batman just? Is he just riding on Robin's coattails? Yeah. We'll report back at the end of the series. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, Batman and Robin, they head to the uh, the storage facility where... What was the other yeah, Slapswell guy like had all of his stuff? Yeah. We get a bat climb here and Robin is really upset about like being made a fool of. Yeah, I, I wrote that this is the wholesome rope climb. Because uh, they talk about, like, how do they expect this to do so much? We're only human. Uh, and then Batman's like, think about that kid that was praying about us in the news. What about him? He needs us to be better. Stuff like that. I don't know. I it was I thought it was very cute. And like it, it kind of it reminded me, like, why superheroes are enjoyable. Like, I know it's very corny, but I like. I like when heroes are heroes, like they're good people trying to do right. And like, yeah, it's not necessarily relatable, but like, I don't know. I, I, I like corny superhero stuff I, as evidence. The fact that we started a podcast about one of probably the corniest superhero show. I don't know. It just reminded me like, yeah, this is why I like superheroes in general, you know, the larger than life characters trying to do good. Like, I don't know. I find it relatively inspirational or aspirational or something you know what i mean yeah well i mean i'm not gonna aspire to be like these people yeah but i do appreciate them in the simplicity of it all we get another broken window oh i, I love when they just smash through windows yeah <laughs> it's so uh, it's so funny to me yeah batman and robin just smash through the window I, i'm a simple man there's two things that will always make me laugh the character's just smashing through windows and like a bad dummy falling off of something oh i do love a bad dummy uh bad dummies falling like the worse the better uh like it's those are the two things that always amuse me and like i love that batman and robin just keep just jumping through windows yeah i guess that's a thing they just do smash yeah. through windows it just looks really comical yeah here in the live action we get another fight scene which is well, exciting yeah but this one doesn't have sound effects so it's not important yeah or not well, as important it's not climactic i should say 
Yeah, well, because we're not at the climax. Yet. Yes. But uh, I just, I was just like, wow, this is such you know, an action-packed story. And I was watching this, so I was like, you know, the action in the show is pretty fun. Like, it's wild. People are, like, jumping all over the place, and, like, camera's always moving. Like, it's yeah. exciting. It's, like, legitimately exciting in my yeah. opinion. No, they they do a really good job with these fights. And one thing I, I noticed during this fight, because, you know, Batman and Joker end up squaring off and, like, kind of grappling and wrestling, like, their color schemes, like, clash together and mesh really well. Like, just, like, the colors, the, the color colors of it, I was like, oh, this is really cool. Something, like, something about the visuals of it, like, was neat. And maybe that's part of, like, why Batman and Joker, like, kind of always go together. Or maybe it's just, you know, like blue and purple. Like, I don't know. Something about it was cool. I don't, I just wrote that Batman's colors versus Joker's is cool. So, and, and forgive me, I'm like a little colorblind, but like this Joker is like much brighter than the Joker we usually get, right? Like, as far as the clothes he wears, he's more of like a magenta than like a deep purple yeah like something yeah something about oh, the show in general is very saturated again i think because color tvs were new so they wanted to like wow people yeah i i feel like because his colors are are so bright well like so batman's are too like they're all kind of turned up to 11 i don't know I, something about it just they, they look cool together yeah it, but if Joker were wearing his like traditional purple or what would become his traditional purple, yeah, I don't where it's know. like where it's like darker. Yeah, I feel like it wouldn't work as well. They would get kind of lost together. So yeah. I, I think their their decision to like brighten him up a bit like really works for their dynamic here. Yeah. I just thought it was cool and I wanted to point it out because that's that's what I thought I was watching. I was like, I really enjoyed this fight scene in general. But yeah, so, you know, as it comes to a close, was it like they're, the Joker and his gentleman are starting to get away and Batman uses his utility belt to try to like get them. But uh, all of a sudden, like the streamers come and get those guys again. And then Robin says, holy 4th of July. Yeah, so Batman goes to throw one of his pellets and yeah, instead of the normal explosion, they get covered in streamers. Yeah, and then like a bunch of fun balloons drop from the ceiling with like messages it's like Fooey on Batman. Uh, what is it? Tough Luck Boy Wonder or something. And like the Joker is great. Something yeah. like that. Oh no, so hooray for the Joker. Hooray for the Joker indeed. Yeah. Uh, yeah, somewhere in the fight, he switched Batman's utility belt for one of his own. Yeah, for the Joker, like a Joker belt. No, am I misremembering or does just like the Joker doesn't use Batman's utility belt, right? No, he doesn't. I, but he gets, I assume he gets it or he at least gets Batman's off and puts his on. So he would use like his gags and tricks instead of his cool Batman stuff. But like, it's funny. Cause like the point of this fight was just to do that and not to, I guess getting away with the loot would have been like a nice secondary thing. But I think this was to really get in Batman's head and kind of take him out of commission as it were because i think this is the night before the ss gotham thing because there was a bunch of spinning papers and i I appreciate a lot of the headlines on them uh were kind of fun yeah we get the title of the last episode yeah the joker is wild like you know there was like little stuff like oh talking about like crime rates and things like i don't know it was fun like look like looking for those details but one of the smaller ones is like batman and robin to do the best as gotham thing tomorrow or whatever yeah um before before we leave the uh the fight scene or at least that set piece batman delivers the line he hit us below the belt yes i loved it <laughs> i'm surprised he, batman got to it before like the joker yeah yeah Oh, I like I like so that this funny. Batman says jokes sometimes. This one was more appropriate than like, I guess she had to a go go or whatever. When uh, what's her name uh, Molly got obliterated in his nuclear reactor. Yeah, what a, what a terrible way to go go. Yeah, that's what it was. So yeah, Robin's reading those papers though, and he's just like losing so confidence. Yeah. yeah, 
And you know, the 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 story isn't really about that, but yeah. It's cool to see that like you know, they're not just bouncing back after Yeah, they're not only resilient. And you know, this is where we get holy headlines. Again, a lot of a lot of catchers. But you know, I I appreciate that they're at least somewhat like well-rounded people. Like like there's an attempt to make them like characters like that. You know what I mean, where they have a little bit more dimension. Yeah, I really appreciate it. Because, you know, especially in this show, it's it's not expected. And then yeah. as far as what Batman becomes, I feel like anymore he's like written as like, I'm the perfect human. Yeah, he's like ultra beyond competent. One of my least favorite Batman tropes is give Batman prep time and he can beat anybody. Like there's an element of that I like, but like not all the time. Like that gets really annoying and old. And like, in my opinion, that stuff becomes more boring than superman being able to beat everybody because at least superman has his set powers like batman always will just invent something some get out of jam mcguffin for this series it's not as big a deal but like that that's a batman trope i don't especially love yeah and and this series is very clever at least so so far yeah i I feel like they want to try like at least batman has like setbacks before he comes up with whatever the solution is going to be you know like this is probably the lowest we've seen them so far. Yeah, like, for Joker real. keeps Joker keeps beating them, or at the very least, getting away. And like, the city is like losing faith in that. Yeah, exactly. Um, like, like they're about to get heckled, which is crazy. Before they get heckled, yeah, uh, we go back to the Joker's amusement park hideout, where we see the next stage of his plan. The Joker busts out a, a bottle of champagne and one of his goons is just like, oh, you're going to get Batman drunk? Is that the next part of the plan? I was surprised to hear them even like mention being drunk, even though we had a drunk guy in the last episode, but like, you know what I mean? Like, it's it's weird. Well, you know, granted, it's I, the sixties, and there's been some drug reference so far. I mean, we saw Batman drunk in the first episode. Oh, he was doped, all right? And he was trying to just drink orange juice. Listen, (laughs) we still saw it. Yeah. Um, It is still the 1960s. I got to remember that. Yeah. But uh, this this bottle of champagne is going to have a very special cork. Yeah. It's very unclear here, but we see what happens. Yeah, it's not made entirely clear, but like Joker's switching the cork on it with like some sort of crazy gadget cork he's got from his utility belt. And then he like rewraps it. Uh, Because in case someone doesn't know, uh, when launching a vessel, it's tradition to smash uh, a bottle of champagne against the side of it for good luck. I don't know why that started, but that just is a thing. It's time to christen the SS Gotham. Commissioner Gordon's there and he's wondering where the heck Bruce Wayne could be and says that they can't wait any longer and ask Batman to get things going. And yeah, the crowd here is really heckling Batman. And Robin's taking it very personally. Poor Robin. I guess that's that's still kind of the way they kind of do it young, where like he's like really like kind of I don't want to say hot-headed. But he's more quick to react to things than Batman. Yeah. Well, he doesn't have the, uh, the confidence. Yeah. yeah. The confidence of a, a grown adult. Yeah. He, he hasn't. He hasn't. Has the, he hasn't been tempered by experience yet. So yeah, Queenie. Not that Gordon police, knows yeah. that. Yeah. She brings them the bottle of champagne, and uh, Batman starts getting a headache, and is like, "Oh, let me take a pill for that." And then Robin, why don't you take this? It might be contagious. And Robin, not reading social cues, yeah, uh, is just like, what the heck, I've never heard of a contagious headache. And Batman's like, just do it, old chum. Yeah, doctor's orders. Yeah, which once we learn out some more pieces of information, Robin's hesitancy here is very strange. Well, uh, how do you mean? All right, so I'll, I'll explain it when we get there then. Okay. Uh, looking forward to it. So Batman smashes the champagne bottle and gas just comes Ex- out. Explodes everywhere, knocks everyone in the, the crowd in the area like out unconscious, uh, including Batman and Robin, uh, which Joker's henchmen and gas masks show up and then uh, take them. 
I forget who it is. I think it might be Gordon. I don't know. Someone just is like, looks dead. Like, but not <laughs> like they died. Like they were like laying in a casket. They're just no, like, I, did, I didn't notice like they had their arms folded over their chest. No, they, their arms were at their side, but they were just like laying completely like on their back, like yeah. straight as a board. Not, not the way someone would like kind of ragdoll. Yeah. yeah. It's just like, oh, this is like he just laid down. Such a silly show. <laughs> yeah, no, that's what makes it so much fun. Yeah. So Batman and Robin get taken back to the Joker's lair. Honestly, the Joker's henchmen maybe should have just had a knife in their pocket and just stabbed them right there. I know, but you got to make a show out of it, right? Yeah, yeah, I guess then Batman would be over. Well, I meant like Joker's got to make a show out of it because he's got a TV camera. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. And he's like, oh, transfer the deed to the SS Gotham to me or I will kill Batman and Robin. They're like at a table and there's like a guy dressed as an executioner with an axe. But uh, so here's then what happens and makes me confused about Robin earlier, because uh, they both spring back up to life. And Joker's like, you should have been knocked out for hours, blah, blah, blah. Batman's like, we because uh, they were analyzing his belt and getting no clues earlier. Uh, the Joker's belt, that is. Um, and he was like, you made your belt a little too exacting. We found a replica of your thing, of your cork, which why would he make that and give to him? Uh, but they were like, we realize what you're going to do. Uh, so I created a universal anti-drug pill, and then we took that. Why didn't Robin know that that was going to be the plan? Like, he had to have known that they figured that out. So why was he like, I don't need to take the anti-drug pill for a headache I don't have? Huh. Yeah. It was Silly Robin. Exactly. But now here, we get into our climactic fight with the, the Joker and all of his hench people. Yeah, the third fight of the story. Which is now kind of the fourth, because uh, when Batman first escapes the seat episode, like, you know, we talk about him, like, running up the rope. They don't really, like, fight, fight, but, like, it is a confrontation. Oh, yeah. yeah. But, yeah, not not the... Not, like, not, the, bru- not the brouhaha's they get into. Yeah, not, not the brawls we uh, have come to expect from this yeah. show. Let's see, the sound effects we get are awk, bam, Crunch spelled appropriately this time. Yeow, which is fun because the O has like a tongue, like it's a screaming mouth. Um, Kerak, and then oof with like 40 O's. But, like, <laughs> I'm really liking how creative and fun all of the sound effect, like, stills, like, uh, designs are. Like, you know, the overlays or whatever you want to call them. Like, they're, they're really interesting and fun. But like, you know, they have, it's another Batman fight scene. Like we've talked about how much fun they are. I do really like them, but like there's not a lot of really, really good details to get into. Yeah, nothing super crazy happens. Uh, yeah. There's one part where like Robin picks up this like clown display and just starts like beating one of Joker's yeah. henchmen over the head with it. Yeah. Really like that. So I mean, the Joker and his gang are defeated. Batman cuffs Molly with the bat cuffs. That's not Molly. That's not Queenie. Molly. Queenie. Sorry. We were just talking about Molly getting obliterated in the nuclear reactor. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Queenie's like tries to flirt her way out of it. And after Batman cuffs her, he just looks at Robin and says, poor deluded child. Yeah. Uh, I thought that was so funny. Some of that uh, casual 60s sexism. Of but, course, uh, you know, Joker and the rest of his goons get no mercy. Yeah. Robin bludgeon, bludgeons them over the head. But, uh, you know. It's just one of those, yes, yeah, it's one of those things. I know I talk about Star Trek a fair amount, but it is a contemporary show to this. And rewatching that, it is very casually sexist for all the progressive things that it has you know for the time it's just it's just a, it's it's just something to note about shows from the 60s they're a product of their time they're very fun this show is very fun in its own ways but like it does do stuff like that and it's like kind of annoying a little bit in a 2022 sense you know it doesn't ruin anything for me it's just it's something i notice and kind of pulls me out of the experience 
if that makes any sense i don't know uh, the way he delivers the line it feels like they're almost like playing that up yeah i will say um i don't think adam west gets enough credit i think he's a great straight man he's funny but like he plays everything straight like i know his most favorite thing is like most famous thing is like some days you just can't get rid of a bomb which in the context of that is not a joke but is very funny but like your, his performance kind of reminds me of like Leslie Nielsen and like Airplane, where like he says these things that are kind of funny, but he does them serious. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I yeah, I know what you mean. That's not something a lot of people can pull off. Yeah. Well, I I mean the show as a whole is kind of doing that. Yeah, exactly. Like the show's earnestness, I think, is part of what makes it so endearing to me. Yeah, I think uh our only character who is comedy relief is Aunt Harriet. Yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, the, the Joker and like the Riddler and those guys, like they're they, you know, they're funny too, and everyone's very entertaining. Um, yeah, but they're not like slapsticky. They're like they are their characters. Yeah, and like you know, the Joker tells jokes. That's what his name implies. Yeah, and I, and I like that he does it in this series. Everyone goes back to jail, presumably. Yep. Uh, we get to see the newscaster again. He's not dead. I'm very happy about that. We also get an update about his son. The newscaster says that his son was so happy to know that there is a Batman. I thought that was so funny because it reminded me of yes, Virginia, there's a Santa Claus. I, I wish we got more of like the characters from like around the city, you know? And yeah. I'll be honest with you, like we mentioned, like uh Crichton and like some other characters I kind of like that like we get to know some of the like the people that live in Gotham City like I kind of wish that there'd be like you know maybe this guy comes back a couple of times as like the news guy yeah maybe I'm interested in playing in this world you know I don't know I I, I think that's fun like the bit of world building because like all you remember about the show is like the principal cast like Batman and his villains and then like Commissioner Gordon and Chief O'Hara are just kind of there they're there to just get Batman like in the same room with it, like the villain's plot. You know what I mean? Yeah. But even they get to do some fun stuff. Like with the, the end of the last story, like Commissioner Gordon's kind of like telling the story at like a party at Bruce Wayne's house. I'm like, oh, it's fun. Get to see some of their personality a little bit more. No, yeah, true. And, you know, at the beginning of this story, we had uh, Chief O'Hara at the baseball game. Yeah. But yeah, hopefully uh, we get to see a little bit more of this world every every episode. I, I think that's pretty par for the course so far. Yeah. I just, I appreciate it. And I, I wasn't expecting as much of it as we got. Yeah. Which, to be fair, is not a crazy amount. But this is, like, we just finished episode six. It's the, and, but, like, it's really the third story, you know? Like, in my brain, this is episode three. I, I, I get what you're saying. Yeah. So yeah, we've reached the end of the show. There's a bit about Dick practicing piano. Yep. We're done. Joker's it's over. in jail. We're all, we're all, we were all very riled this whole episode. Oh, so riled. I will say I appreciate, so I know they do the rhyming like couplets for the, the two-parters. I appreciate that the first episode, the Joker was wild, and this one, Batman, was riled. Yeah, although I'd say... Uh... Robin was a bit more riled than Batman. Yeah. I think Batman, I think Batman was, but he just wasn't as uh, on it. So what do you rate the Joker's plan here? All right. So the Joker's plan, I mean, I kind um, of instinctually just want to give him a three. I want to give him a three too, because I think he was mostly very successful and his plan was kind of interesting. And like, it was mostly working. Just he, over, he just, uh, you know, he just Icarus it and flew a little clo- too close to the sun. If he didn't instigate Batman that last time when they switched belts, he might have gotten away with it. Yeah. Oh, and I don't think we mentioned, but the the reason Batman knew that the champagne bottle was the, you know, oh, yeah, the delivery yeah. method was because there was uh, no discoloration on the seal of the bottle. Yeah, I think he said it was like the 1940s or something. Yeah, he's like, yeah, yeah, because you remember he said that, like, when he was looking at, was handed the bottle to Chris in the ship. Yeah, so so it's like some detective Joker made like two. Yeah, yeah, we do. That is Batman being a detective. Yeah. So two little mistakes on the on the Joker's part. 
you know, I guess he's kind of foiled twice though. Like he he did try to get bat get rid of Batman a couple times and I, I think comparatively comparing him to Riddler and Penguin so far, I think this was like the best plan so like the best scheme we've seen. Yeah. I mean, honestly, Batman never really figured out how to beat the Joker's utility belt. Yeah, I guess yeah, he didn't. He just kind of figured out what the Joker was up to and like was able to counteract that a little bit. It stinks because like I'm sure uh, when we next see the Joker, he will not have a utility belt. But like after this, like it news, like you know, with all the news and stuff, like why doesn't everyone have a utility belt? Yeah, right. Yeah. So yeah, I I say we just give him a three. Yeah, I'm 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 down for a three. My instinct was three. Yeah. Yeah, do we have any other uh, responsibilities here? No, just uh, tell people to like and subscribe and comment. Email us at batcast66 uh, at gmail.com. Um, and once we start getting stuff, we'll respond to things in the show. Uh, you know, questions and comments and whatnot. What did we miss? What do you guys think of so far? And then it's a podcast. So we need ratings. That helps. So if you're enjoying it, share, rate, do all of that stuff. You hear it a million times. Yeah, you already know what to do. Yeah. All right. So next week we get a uh, a new villain. Yeah, I'm excited. So far, I've been enjoying uh, each episode. Seems to have gotten better and better. So uh, yeah, hopefully that continues for a little while. All right. Yeah. So uh, we'll catch you next week. Same backcast time, same backcast channel, and uh, maybe bring a sweater. <laughs>